let me let me see it's on reddit okay but seriously where 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 was this from where was this from okay i'm not gonna look at this so it's literally somebody like hacked mobilitics and it was able to get them early what did, did they set their computer clock ahead did they just like go into their clock and set it ahead 10 minutes or something how did they do that just change your time <laughs> wait it wasn't actually that was it <laughs> Like, <laughs> that would be way too funny. That would be way too funny if it was actually that. No way. <laughs> I tried. It doesn't work. Hang on. Let me let me try. Set date and time. All right. All right. Hang on. It's 9 a.m. Oh, we're an hour ahead. <laughs> like, what? What? Okay. Oh, shit. Okay, god damn it. I was This was supposed to be a joke. I was doing a joke for my stream. This was not supposed to work. That is actually probably not good. Like Mobilitics might not be happy with me. I like uh, that was not supposed to work. Fuck! John, god fucking damn it. That's actually how they got the leaks. That's actually how they got the leaks. They set their clock ahead. What? <laughs> Holy shit. Well, it's too late, you know? We're already wet. Might as well go swimming. It's The thing is like I'm in a like It's too late. The people already know. Don't don't fix it. Don't fix it overnight. But god damn it. <laughs> How did that happen? Oh my god. <laughs> this is the funniest thing. <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> oh god. This is literally... This this is literally a, a, a thematic addition. Cause stream is all about like time, right? They've got like zillion and echo. So they set it up so just to like reward literal time travelers. Holy shit. Okay. The Twitter video should be out. I do want to do things properly. So for those of you guys who just wanted to read the cards, like obviously you, you can see them on the screen. But I, I want to check out I you know, I want the full experience. I want to go to the Lissandra uh twitter wait did they did, did they release this an hour early too this one says there's a lissandra an hour ago i will bury the world in ice a dark cloud looms on when i'm summoned summon a frozen thrall to three mana two three with tough when you've summoned two plus allies does that cost eight wow that's hard Drac Lord Inquisitor, when I'm summoned, summon a thrall. If the countdown of any of your frozen monsters is four or less, advance them to zero. Interesting. You, lady. So it just Don't unfreezes your things. Question. And these are eight. Oh, they have overwhelm. These are eight, eight overwhelms. Secrets hidden by frost. Okay. That was, a, that was a pretty good level up animation. On a scale from Teemo to Vernectin, I'll give that a Leeson. I am eternal. Wait, did that just say your Nexus is tough? <laughs> what? This, so this has to only work while she's on the board. It doesn't say for the rest of the game. So while leveled up Lissandra is on your board, your Nexus is tough. And it creates a zero cost I'm ice shard. <laughs> 17 mana? Excuse me? And tomb. Obliterate a unit and summon a frozen tomb. All things to come to the cold. So that probably it probably traps it in ice like hourglass. 
That's what you guys were saying Lissandra would do. Ice shard... Was, what did that say? Deal one to everything. So she gets a free ice shard every turn. But it doesn't damage the Nexus since she gives it tough. So it hits your opponent's Nexus but not yours. Survive the icy landscape to obliterate your opponent's stack. Wait, I didn't read that. I cost zero if you've summoned four plus allies that cost eight this game. Attack, obliterate the enemy deck. <laughs> so all it needs to do is declare an attack and the game is basically over. This is, it, it's, it's just the attack order has to go through. It can't get stunned before it's attack. <laughs> yeah, I love that dude. That's so much more interesting than just like a big overwhelm dude. Even though it's kind of the same thing. New meme card. It'll be a little meme -y, but it's pretty funny. I think th this clip is a really good example of why this card is meme -y. There's kind of this problem. This card is saying when you've played four allies that cost eight plus, you win the game. Take, take a look at this board state, guys. What's the Watcher doing here? Like... I mean, that's 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 why it's a little overkill. It's it's really funny. It's not going to be bad per se, but it will be overkill in a lot of scenarios. <laughs> that's, <laughs> but it's really really funny. All right, so now we can check out all the new cards since they're on Mobilitics. Okay. <laughs> I would I would say no snitches, but it's too late. I would say no snitches, but I know that there's like several people from Mobilitics that are already watching this. <laughs> We're just not going to talk about it anymore. <laughs> That's fine. Okay. So the new cards. <clears throat> We're going to check them all out. We saw Lissandra the Watcher and Tomb. So that's her champ spell. Frozen two minutes plays. Countdown two. Summon an exact copy. Okay. So it's exactly the same as the Hourglass. Except you can use it on opponents. And it's countdown two. For five mana. So you're you're taking something and you're you're sending it away for it's like you're putting it in stasis for two turns. I like this stasis concept. That th this is kind of cool. You can use this on your allies too sometimes to protect them. Frozen thrall, one mana, landmark, countdown eight, summon a frost guard thrall, and that's the eight eight overwhelm. I'm glad they gave this overwhelm because it would be completely useless otherwise. Um, and it's main deckable. You can main deck frozen thrall as well. And it's countdown eight. And this, wow. So if you play it on turn one, you'll get this on turn nine. But this will help us. This is not just summon, right? Yeah, summon. This is a summon for eight. And Watcher is also only counting summons, not plays. So Frozen Thrall will work with them. Okay, this is this is pretty good. This, <clears throat> this makes sense. This is kind of like a staple of this deck archetype. Ice Shard, deal one to everything. Fast. Interesting. And it's main deckable as well. So this is the thing she gets at the end for zero mana fleeting but you can also just run it in your deck as a three mana deal once everything so it's kind of like a worse fast avalanche you can compare it to death lotus i think a lot of people are going to make that comparison because it's similar to the noxus card death lotus which of course it costs one more mana and it hits both nexuses and benched units which has like upsides and downsides for the most part <clears throat> you can call it a worth a worse death lotus and I actually think that is probably true. Like, I, I think I agree that it's kind of a worse Death Lotus. But the thing is that Death Lotus is mostly awkward because it's in Noxus. Like, Death Lotus is a really good card, guys. If, if, if this card was in, like, Freljord or Shadow Isles, or if Noxus had a little more help, Death Lotus would see a lot more play. And for those of you guys who don't know, Death Lotus has seen a decent amount of, like, experimental, like, tournament slot-ins. It's not bad. It, it really isn't. But it's Noxus has uh, made it feel really awkward in a lot of spots. I start actually could be decent. <clears throat> Draclorn Inquisitor. So this is the card we saw earlier. It's a 5-4-5. Five, five. When I'm summoned, summon a Frozen Thrall. So that's another one of these puppies. Round end. If the countdown of any of your thralls is four or less, advance them to zero. So does that mean you can get them on five? Hang on. Let me do the math. If you play Frozen Thrall on turn one. Countdown will go to seven. Then six. Then five. Then four. So if you play Draclorn... If you play Frozen Thrall on turn one... 
and you play an Inquisitor on turn 5? When you press the pass button, going into turn 6, you'll just have an 8-8 Overwhelm on the board? That seems a little... Fucking nuts! What?! <laughs> I'm gonna be rereading this, like... That's pretty good! Huh! Okay! Blighted Ravine, Landmark, 4 mana, when I'm summoned, heal your Nexus 4, Countdown 1, deal 2 to everything. So it's like an avalanche. Oh, wow. So it hits both Nexuses, unlike avalanche. It heals your Nexus 4 when it's summoned. But unlike avalanche, you can't... So it has pros and cons. This is, this is a weird card to evaluate. You can't use spell mana, which matters a bit for sure. That does matter a bit. Most importantly, you can't punish development. Like, it's a delayed avalanche. So when they develop into you, you can't punish it with an avalanche. But an important thing that Blighted Ravine does... <clears throat> something that's really not bad is if you've played a lot of Freljord, and if you play at a decent level, you'll notice that smart opponents will kind of like, they'll play around Avalanche by taking some semi-aggressive passes and force you to commit mana first. When you're on at your attack turn, when they're on their defense turn, and they have like a two or three unit board, they'll be passing waiting for you to spend your mana. If you play an Avalanche, they can redevelop. Whereas if you play Blighted Ravine in that kind of spot, not only can they not redevelop because anything they develop will die, you're also healing four for free. Which is huge, by the way. Which is huge. So, it, 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 on offensive turns, this is a lot worse than Avalanche. You're healing your Nexus for four. Okay, yeah, sure. You're healing your Nexus for two, because the, the countdown damages you too. Yes, yes, yes. And you're damaging them for two, which doesn't matter too much, but you're right. It's only a heal too. But... That's pretty interesting. You destroy their open attack too. Yeah, you destroy their open attack too. This card, I think a lot of people are going to make the mistake of caring, uh, of comparing Blighted Ravine to Avalanche because that's an easy comparison to make because the words and numbers are kind of similar. But the functions are very different. This card is kind of like, it, it, it's the open attack punisher and Avalanche is the development punishers. So you might say a lot of people are going to argue oh is this card better than avalanche is this card worse than avalanche and that's not the comparison to make it's th this card is functionally different this card probably has synergy with avalanche this card forks them with avalanche because if they pass if, if they try to open attack this card pre-developed can punish them whereas if they develop avalanche will punish them so this card is not wow this is interesting i don't know how to evaluate this card I think it's it's decent. It seems pretty runnable. Maybe not as a three of. Maybe as... Uh, you're not going to cut Avalanche and run this card instead. But I think this card is a good supplement to the Avalanche game plan. If that makes sense. Like, if your opponent pl is playing around Avalanche, they're going to have an awkward time into Blighted Ravine. So I, I like this with like two or three Avalanche and maybe like one or two Blighted Ravine. Or something like that? Uh, maybe. I don't know. Some, that's that's how I'd start. Three sisters. Create a fleeting flash freeze. Fury of the North are in tomb in hand. Wow. Wow, that's so flexible. So it's one mana, and it can be any of three cards. Flash freeze, Fury of the North, which we know, and in tomb, which was this card. Obliterate a unit and summon the frozen tomb. So we have to evaluate how good this really is. It's got some interesting flexibility. Create all, not pick one. No, no, no. It says or. I th I th this should let you choose, right? Yeah, th this should let you choose. It's not going to be random. It, it would say random. <clears throat> yeah, you choose one. So basically, you this can be a four mana flash freeze. It can be a four mana, a five mana fury of the north, or it can be a six mana entomb. I, I love the this card's flavor is really cool. Three sisters. I don't know I don't know shit about League of Legends lore, but I do know someone informed me recently that Lissandra is the sister of both Sejuani and Ash. So this spell is like cool from a lore perspective. It's like, do you want Ash's spell, Sejuani's spell, or Lissandra's spell, or something like that, right? They're not sisters. So why the fuck is this called Three Sisters? 
Someone told me they're sisters. God damn it. I'll never understand lore, dude. Like, never mind. This card blows. Anyway. <sighs> Three sisters is... I mean, Fury of the North is all right. The most important thing about this card is it does trigger spells twice. So if you have, let's say, for example, a Starlet Seer on the board, this isn't just a four mana flash freeze. It's also a second spell trigger, which will matter for Puffcat Peddler decks. Puffcat Peddler is actually a deck archetype right now. You know, Timo Sejuani or like Timo Ezreal versions are also running Puffcat Peddler. So yeah, you can totally run three sisters in a deck like that. That might not be bad, like the spell trigger is worth it for that. So we have to consider Entomb and how valuable this is really going to be, right? So Entomb is obliterated unit and summon the frozen tomb in its place. This is so interesting. This is so interesting. What are we going to do with this? So we can compare this to Will of Ionia, which is, as you guys know, five mana, um, which recalls a unit. So if we're using Entomb on an opponent's unit, it's kind of basically a worse Will of Ionia because they get it for free two turns later. And it's important that this is Countdown 2, right? If this was Countdown 3, it would stop a second attack. But because it's Countdown 2, it'll... Yeah, yeah, that's right. Because it's Countdown 2, it'll work once on... Like, okay, let's say they attack into you. You use this and they stay frozen on their defense turn, which can matter in, in board states where attacking and defending matters. They stay frozen on their defense turn. But they get it back at the start of their next attack turn. So you're only stopping one attack or one defense, potentially. Ne never two of both. But one of each. Which means if you're in a situation where you want the defense and the offense, that can be good. <clears throat> Entomb doesn't let them regain the on-player summon effects. Yeah, exactly. So Entomb is really interesting. It has a lot of benefits over Will. You can destroy the Tomb. You can destroy the Frozen Tomb. And you can use that using like any landmark removal. The most important thing is because this is countdown two and not countdown one, you can do this in a two turn combo. So you can entomb a unit, like let, let's say they attack into you, you entomb their unit and then next turn you just drop your desert naturalist and just kill it, right? Um, doesn't have to be desert naturalist. You can also use, of course, scorched earth. You can use aftershock. So entomb has some synergy there. In fact, I really like it, maybe not as a main deck, but at the very least, for the same deck, the Timo Sejuani style deck that we're seeing on ladder right now, those kinds of decks, well, they can certainly use three sisters, because not only are you getting an extra spell trigger, but you are getting the ability to uh, potentially have some instances of synergy there. You're not going to do it that often. It's important to understand this is an expensive combo, and I think it's very similar to the Detain Purify combos that we have talked about in the past. Which is to say, for those of you guys who don't know, Detain Purify was this kind of like, it was kind of a meme where you like absorb their unit and then silence your unit so they don't get it back. Now, it actually wasn't that bad because Purify was run back in the day. Detain Purify was a combo where it's actually okay if it sometimes happens if you're just naturally running these two cards together, right? Detain and Purify. And it's not like it's bad to ever do. But we shouldn't go out of our way from it from a deck building standpoint. And that's kind of how I see like or Entomb plus Aftershock or Entomb plus Landmark Removal. I don't think we're going to build a deck where we have Entomb. So we're like, okay, I'm just going to add Landmark Removal to this so I can have like a 9 mana 2 card Vengeance. We're not going to do exactly that. No. But what we will do is like... Like, if we're naturally running Entomb or Three Sisters, and we're naturally running something that can do landmarks, which that those will naturally happen every once in a while, yes, there will be that niche combo where that can happen. So just make sure we don't go out of our way for it, but it's, it's not a bad thing to consider as like a very minor bonus that will sometimes happen, right? That will sometimes happen. So yeah, uh, Entomb... Is not bad. What else can we do with Entomb? This is a super cool utility card. We can, Unlike Will of Ionia. So Entomb is kind of like... If we use it on an opponent's unit, it's worse than Will of Ionia. Right? But if we use it on our own unit, it's better than Will of Ionia. Because we don't have to pay the mana again. Right? So we can save our unit. It's like a deny. 
It's like a sometimes if we have a unit that needs to be saved, it's like a five mana deny. Now a lot of you guys are gonna point out, well, swim just doesn't that just make it a, a much worse hourglass because it's three extra mana and it takes an extra turn to get your unit back? And yes, that is true. But you guys have to understand that Ancient Hourglass can't be used on opponent's units. So being able to sometimes use this as a much worse Hourglass will matter. That's the thing. Like, yes, th this, this would be a much worse than that, but it's two cards in one. So there will be some times where you want to use this, like you're paying for the ability to use this offensively, but maybe in like 15% of cases, you'll be able to use it defensively. And that's a really big deal, right? You forgot a card? Yeah, I actually haven't even read the last card yet. Sorry. I, I didn't forget it. I've just been so tracked on it too. I'll, I'll come back to Entomb in a second. All right, Cold Resistance. I will talk about this last card. <laughs> Get an Empty Mana Gem and grant an ally plus zero plus two. Wait, is that... <sighs> Hang on. So it's like a Catalyst of Eons, but you're getting the plus two health instead of heal your Nexus three. Is that crazy? So this is a card that I'm not really comfortable evaluating because... I don't personally play a lot of Shadow Isles Freljord. It's better in some cases. In like the in the current builds of Shadow Isles Freljord right now, we wouldn't really be able to use it. The problem with Cold Resistance is actually, I think, pretty simple. Which is that the whole point of Catalyst of Eons, like think about the turns, right? This is a five mana card. Which means, and, and it's ramp, so you often want to play it as soon as possible. Now, the sign of a good ramp player is knowing when to not just catalyst on curve, right? You need to know when to not just catalyst on curve. That's important. And a lot of bad ramp players will just catalyst on turn three no matter what. And that's honestly, in a lot of cases, a misplay. But the important thing is the ability to be able to catalyst on three, right? Because that's kind of the nut situation when you can afford it. And it's really hard to use Cold Resistance on turn three, because that'll leave you with one mana left that you'll be able to use on an ally, potentially. I will say, we don't know exactly, this wording could be a little bit unclear. I'm pretty sure you can cast this if you don't have a unit. It's not going to be like Troll Chant, where you need to have a unit on board to cast this. It will, the game will let you cast it if you don't have a unit. It's just going to be three less health than Catalyst when that happens. Some of you guys are pointing out Taric. Taric, of course, works pretty well with Cold Resistance because you can double up on it, which is a little insane. You know, you, you're, this is a turn five play at this point. So that sounds really bad. But you'll get to eight mana really fast, I guess. I mean, if, if Cold Resistance on Taric wasn't a turn five play, it might make more sense. But honestly... Oh god, Tarek sounds so bad for this, guys. Tarek sounds so absurdly bad for this. You don't even know. Oh my god. Don't run Tarek with this. <laughs> That's like the worst thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Not a chance. <laughs> Not a chance. Alright. And now that we've now that we've gone through all this, I can I can also look at Watcher. I can also look at Watcher and Lissandra. Because there's there's so much to break down. My verdict on a tomb is that it's it's decent. I'm thinking it's probably not going to be a main deck card, but getting it off of Lissandra's champ spell, as well as getting it off of maybe three sisters sometimes, will be decent. Um, so I don't mind Entomb. That's kind of like my verdict. I wanted to spend two minutes on that because this is a super hard to break down card. So three sisters, given Entomb's position, I honestly don't love three sisters. I think you'll be able to run it in that kind of like, puff cap peddler style deck and that'll be pretty sweet but i think that in most cases the ability to sometimes pull in a two more fury actually might not be worth the one mana the thing is flash freeze is so good compared to these so flexibility is so premium in, in legends of runeterra this kind of card would normally be completely insane but i'm when i'm looking at three sisters i'm thinking you're just gonna choose flash freeze too much of the time to the point where you'd probably just rather main deck Flash Freeze. Like, Flash Freeze is such a good card, and it has a, such a hard time ever really bricking, that I'm not going to want to pay one mana every single time, just for the ability to sometimes play a, a six mana Entomb. Yeah, that would be a six mana Entomb, I think. Um, but it's totally fine to play it in some specific decks, like Puff Caps or Entomb off of Lissandra. Okay, now, finally, back to Lissandra Watcher. Spectral Matron Watcher. 
Wait, that actually would work. <laughs> All right, so Watcher is a crazy card, guys. This, this is actually so crazy. I, I kind of love this. I kind of love this. Holy I'm shit. Basically one wow. So, Lissandra needs to level up to create the Watcher in your hand. You have to summon two allies that cost eight plus for that to happen. Which is a little hard. God, you have to be in Trundle, right? I think given that, so Lissandra doesn't really do enough without leveling up, right? She's not a level one champ. She's a level two champ. She's a champ you want to level up. When you play her, she creates the Frozen Thrall, but she creates it on turn three, which means you're not getting her 8-8 eight eight off of her being played until turn 11, which is pretty crazy. That's, that's like very deep into the game. So she doesn't really do a lot without leveling up. She needs to level up. So you need to, I think you need to run her with Trundle for, to summon two plus allies that cost eight. Trundle's ice pillar is kind of like the only way to actually reliably get that to go off, right? Like if you play, you know, obviously she does work with her own landmarks if you're main decking these frozen thralls and frozen thralls might be pretty good. Use target and speak. So we actually, that's interesting. We don't know how that's gonna work. If, if the game logic works how it has in the past, Targon's Peak wouldn't work for this. We, we do know that if you discount things, they don't count as the cost that they were initially. Like if you mobilize a bunch of one drops, it doesn't work with Von Yip. So unless they've changed that logic, it's not going to work with discounted units. We don't know for sure though. They might've changed that logic. So Lissandra, you need to level up. I think you have to run her with Trundle. Like, Trundle is just so much the easiest way to get this level up condition. Like, that Ice Pillar is so important for this. You, you need to level her up on, like, 8 or 9. Easily. Without spending unit mana. That's so important. So, yes. We need that. Um, next, once she's leveled up, your Nexus gets tough. And you're generating these Ice Shards every turn. This is actually kind of scary, by the way. This is actually kind of scary. When she's leveled up, your Nexus gets tough and she generates these every turn. You can think of leveled up Lissandra. I'm going to make this comparison. It's not quite there. It's sort of kind of like leveled TF. Um, now, TF is obviously like an like an OP champion, and he's stronger than Lissandra, and I'm not saying they're on the same power level, but you just kind of keep her on the bench, and she'll level a lot slower than TF, because TF levels on like turn 5, and she levels on like turn 9. But when she levels, it's like you're red carding every turn, because these ice shards are dealing one damage to everything except your own Nexus, because she gives that tough. One damage to everything every turn. And your Nexus having tough keeps you a little bit more survivable in a sort of similar but less strong way than gold card keeping you more survivable. There's, there's like, leveled TF vibes. Not as powerful, but just the general kind of function is similar there. And you generate the Watcher in hand, which is just this crazy win condition card. If you generate the Watcher in hand... Well, you can cheat it out in a lot of ways. And once it attacks, it wins the game on the spot. If you play a bunch of eight cost units, you'll be able to play the Watcher, which I don't love. That's kind of too slow. It'll work with a bunch of the Frozen Thralls. I mean, to be honest, if you've played a bunch of Frozen Thralls in like Draclorn Inquisitor, that'll just kind of work as well. But Watcher, if you do it like that, if you're cheating it out that way, I see it as overkill. If you're at the point where you have cheated it out so much by playing like four of these Frost Guard Thralls, I think there you've already won the game. Where Watcher gets interesting is when you've leveled up Lissandra, when you've leveled up Lissandra, but you haven't necessarily just like won the game on the spot yet, right? Which is to say you've played two things. You've played like an Ice Pillar and you've played like one of your Frost Guard Thralls. And then you can cheat out Watcher. You guys are saying Spectral Matron. Spectral Matron can cheat out Watcher because it's just an attack effect, right? You don't need to play it. So Spectral Matron will pick an ally in hand for 8 mana. This will be 8 mana. Pick an ally in hand, summon an exact copy of it. It's ephemeral. What would be really funny if this somehow executed in reverse order? If Spectral Matron could be the 8 mana card that levels up your Lissandra and gets you the Watcher, that would be so sick. Unfortunately, it doesn't work because... You need to have the ally in hand when you play the matron. So it like the sequence doesn't work. The second thing you guys are talking about is revitalizing roar. Revitalizing roar is another way of discounting it to zero. Because once you hit enlightened mana, you just play seven mana, reduce the watcher to zero, and the watcher will um oh sorry, I can't type watcher. The watcher will go to will, will, will go all the way down to zero. You'll heal back up basically to full. <laughs> 
And that turn, you will play Watcher and potentially attack and win the game on the spot if they don't stop it. So it's kind of like Roar Ledros, potentially with extra steps. It's like, it's, it's, you have to have like the Lissandra leveled up beforehand as opposed to Roar Ledros kind of needing the atrocity as well. And it's counterable as well with stuff like Hush. It's interesting. I, like, I, I think this is, I, I love this card. I, this is a cool combo. And it looks like it might actually be decent. Like, it's not going to be too weak. It does have things that, like, it's not too counterable. It, I'm glad they didn't just stick Overwhelm on this and make it like a 30-30, like, Cataclysm. Um, this is a pretty cool card. For those of you guys saying this is going to be super toxic or super OP, I don't think it's going to be anything like that. I love this card. I, I kind of love how it's balanced. I think that I don't see a way for this to be like insanely nuts because the thing is like leveling up Lissandra is going to be a pretty rocky mini quest. Like she will set you back and her game plan will set you back. And usually when she levels up or when you're playing the watcher, it's on board states where you're already ahead. So I will say, I'm not saying this is too weak or anything like that, but anyone saying this is like super OP or super toxic, it's not going to be that crazy. But it's cool. I, I like the power level this is on. I like the power level this is on. So yeah, overall, I think the strongest thing, if we're just evaluating the competitive nature of these cards, I think the strongest thing that we're seeing here, personally, is the Dracolorn Inquisitor and Frozen Thrall stuff. That, to me, is, is kind of crazy. I think that there will be a way to just kind of like build around that. When you're playing like one mana landmarks, landmark removal doesn't really do much to that, right? Landmark removal is like, okay, they're, they're over committing on that. And when this hits, it's really big. When Dracula and Inquisitor hits the Frozen Thrall, that's just like kind of game winning to just have that on turn six for free. And that's a very common board state. Like they're not going to be able to necessarily kill your five mana unit on turn five. And even if they kill your landmark on one, then all you have to do is just win with the rest of your cards because they're down like two mana. Like this is a really powerful pocket combo. And it's so common. All you need to do is draw Frozen Thrall in your opening hand. And you don't even need to draw Dracula and Inquisitor until four turns later. So this is like a super common pocket combo that looks really powerful. Really, really powerful. And you can like maybe run Lissandra in that. Lissandra, I think you have to run her with Trundle. I just don't see another way to use her. Uh, you could try her with Talia. There's, there's some kind of synergy here. With Talia's, like, landmark thing and the Entomb and you might be running Desert Naturalist with to kill the Entomb things. But I don't think I like that. I think the, these two decks are going to uh, are gonna pull you in two different directions. I don't like that at all, actually. Like, Lissandra really... You, you're playing her to level her up. You need a bunch of 8 costs. You need the ability to... Like, Trundle feels necessary. And you want to be a slower control -y deck. And I don't see that of Talia. So I, I think Lissandra and Talia together is kind of a bait. I think they're just kind of two different decks. Because Talia is also just about like owning the board and playing a bit more, a, a bit tempo driven. Like she wants the end game sooner. Lissandra is like kind of full control almost. Unless you're blowing out early with the Drac Lord. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the minor synergy between them I don't think is enough to, to make you want to combine them. And yeah, I think that basically covers it. I've kind of talked about all of these cards. Cold Resistance is probably a bit worse than Mana Gem. Uh, I don't, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't see the seeing play. Three Sisters, pretty good, but I think a bit below Flash Freeze in a lot of cases. I might be wrong about this one. Flexibility is super premium in this game, and it will see play in some decks at least, for sure. Blighted Ravine, um, pretty decent. I think this will see good play in control decks as like a one over a two of. This will be really annoying for the opponent to play around. It won't replace, it won't dethrone Avalanche, but it will be a nice addition maybe to that. Jackalord Inquisitor and Frozen Thrall, these are like the best things here. And Ice Shard, I don't know if this is main deckable. It's close. It's, it, nah, you, you might be able to see this. There, there's an argument that you could try getting out of Shadow Isles. I could, I could maybe see that in a weird reality where we're more in this Overwhelm game plan, but we're playing slower. The fact that Freljord now has access to Ice Shard, which is this like fast speed board sweep, which can replace some things that Shadow Isles tries to do as a region, which is like, you know, the, the withering whale side of things. I can, I can see a weird reality where people try to build a failure control deck that escapes Shadow Isles. I don't think we're quite there yet, but we're pretty close, actually. 
And yeah, that's all the cards covered. So that is my initial impressions of these cards. What do you guys think? What have I missed out on? Overall, power level of Lissandra, looking pretty decent. Not like nuts, but pretty good. I'd put her uh, below below Jarvan. Jarvan seems kind of insane to me. Um, it pretty pretty much on the same level of Talia. Pretty good. Like definitely not bad. Definitely not bad. And I love her ability. I I, I think she she does some really cool things here. All right, let's see what let's see let's see what I missed out on. I, I love reading chat after this because there's always going to be a couple of weird combos, a couple of weird combos that I just didn't see.